All right, today on this 2012 Toyota Highlander, we're going to install part number 90885. This is the Takancha Prodigy P2 trailer brake controller. Now, to help us install this brake controller, we're also going to use part number ETBC7. This is the brake controller install kit. And we're going to start with that part number first. Now, ETBC7 kit will contain a seven pole connector and all the parts requiring to go up to our brake controller up towards the front. So we'll start off our bracket. Now our hitch here has a pre-existing bracket, so it makes life kind of easy. So let's go ahead and stack it on top, and we'll go ahead and use the hardware that comes with the kit to attach it. We get a screw and a flat washer, and underneath we'll get a star washer and a nut. In this case, a, a stubby screwdriver works really good. And if you're lucky, the star washer will lock the nut in place. You can just tighten it down. All right, let's go ahead and install our seven pole connector. This has a seven pole and a four pole. We'll go ahead and use the provided hardware to attach it to the bracket. It should be a long bolt here and a nut on the back side with a built-in star washer. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and start hooking up some wires. We'll go ahead and start with our four pole connector that comes off our adapter. This will plug into the previously installed four pole wiring harness, which is currently tucked up behind the bumper. So our four poles will go together. We'll also use some dielectric grease on the contacts here to protect the connection point because this will be a, basically a, a permanent connection when we're done. But if you ever need to, you can always still unplug it. And the part number for a dielectric grease we're using is 11755. We'll go ahead and put some electrical tape around it, get a little bit of extra security and protection. All right, next we'll go ahead and deal for white and purple wires. Our white wire at the ring terminal is going to be ground, and our purple wire is an auxiliary wire. You can use it for any other circuit you want. Typically, it's going to be used for reverse lights. In this case, our application doesn't need it, so it'll be stored out of the way along with the ground wire. We're going to route ours up following the pre-existing harness. We'll attach it to the metal right here. Now, will you be using a self-tapping screw that comes with the kit to install our ground? And this will use a 3 8 bit. Our next two wires are going to be our blue and black wires. We're going to connect these two up to our gray cable that comes with the kit. We'll go ahead and strip the sheath back. We'll strip the wires back and add them to our buck connectors. We're going to match them up black to black and blue to white. A black wire will then should be used for a 12 volt power supply straight from the battery to power anything on the trailer. Our white wire is going to come from an output from a brake controller back to blue. Eventually, the other half of this white wire will go back to blue on the brake controller. Okay, let's go ahead and add some electrical tape to protect our connections. Okay, and we'll go ahead and route this wire up along with our white and purple wires for its initial run. Okay, all right. It's temporarily in place. So let's, let's go ahead and take our wires and bundle them up. And we'll use some of the loom material that comes with the kit to help hide the wires. We'll go ahead and secure them, and then continue running our gray wire up towards the front.
All right, once we have our wire secured, we'll go ahead and cut off the tails. And then we'll go ahead and work our cable up towards the front. When we, when we run our cable up towards the front, we want to stay away from anything moving like suspension components or anything hot like the exhaust. And up towards the front, you want to make sure you stay away from the steering components as well. We'll go ahead and show you how we ran our wire. You can see how we started off here, went over this plastic panel here, went underneath the frame rail, and above the subframe for rear suspension. Now on the very top, there's a small tab you have to feel for. You can use that as a attachment point for some zip ties. Continuing on, we went behind this line right here. We continued down until we hit the parking brake cable, and we just zip tied to it. After that, we just tucked it underneath the panel right here, and you can get it from, you actually get easier from the outside to get to the fasteners, and just pull them down a little bit, and we just thread our cable all the way through it and let the panels do our work. Now to pull our wire up from the bottom to the top, we'll be using a, a pull wire. In this case, we'll be using an old piece of airline tubing. This could be also any piece of wire that can hold its shape. It helps shine a flashlight down there to see which way you're going. And we're going to run it out along the, as close to the firewall and towards the outside of a frame. We route it towards the middle of the vehicle again. We ran our cable out towards the center and to our pull wire. Let's go ahead and make our attachment to our pull wire. And pull it up. Once we got our wire pulled up, we'll go ahead and tie it off to the factory wire harness here to keep it from falling back down. Now it's always a good idea to get extra zip ties anytime you're doing electrical. All right, next, okay, we'll, leave, we'll go ahead and leave a gray cable alone for now, just set it to the side. Next we need to install two circuit breakers. Now a 40 amp circuit breaker is gonna be for our 12 volt power supply going to our seven pole connector and eventually to our trailer. The other circuit breaker is going to be a 20 amp circuit breaker for the brake controller itself. Now the ETPC7 kit comes with actually three of them, so depending on how big of a trailer you're going to use, you may need the 30 amp circuit breaker for a heavier trailer. In this case, this vehicle probably wouldn't pull that much, so we're pretty safe with the 20 amp. We'll go ahead and use a few screws to attach to the sheet metal right here. Now these sheet metal screws do come with the kit, and it'll use a quarter inch uh, driver to run them into the material right here. Okay, back to our gray cable. We'll go ahead and lay it out the way we're going to route it. And then we'll go ahead and route it through our circuit breakers and then leave some excess to go to the positive side of our battery. We'll need to use this excess to go between our battery and our brake controller eventually. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and pull the gray cover off our cable here. Now our white wire will eventually go to the inside to the brake controller and our black wire is gonna go to our 40 amp circuit breaker. Put our white wire off to the side. Let's go ahead and route our black wire back. I'm gonna run it behind this reservoir here. Go ahead and run it behind a fuse box here. Then up to our 40 amp circuit breaker. We'll go ahead and cut our wire in half and add a small ring terminal to each half.
Okay, let's go ahead and add these two wires to our circuit breaker. Okay. Now anything going out to an accessory like our seven pole connector or trailer will go to the silver post. Power off the battery will go to the copper post. Okay, let's go ahead and tighten down our terminals with a 3-8 socket. And our other half of our black wire, we'll get a large ring terminal. This will get routed underneath the battery holder. This will eventually go to our 12 volt power supply right here. Now I like to leave my connections to the battery as one of the last things that we do. So let's go ahead and set that to the side for now. Just tuck it in the cap. Next we'll go ahead and make an entry point for our white wire as well as the rest of our gray cable for our brake controller. Now there's no easy way in to run our wire so we're going to have to drill a hole through the firewall. So to do that, we're going to pull back the carpet down as far as possible. And we're also find the bottom edge of, of where the steering shaft goes through and we'll go off to the left hand side. We'll cut out our insulation as well and make a flap so we can drill out our hole. There you go. I think that'll do just nicely. Okay. We'll go ahead and start off with a pilot bit first, about three eighths of an inch. All right, now we'll go back at it with a larger size bit. In this case, it's gonna be 11 sixteenths. Okay, now into our hole, we're gonna install snap bushing, part number SWC8057. All right, let's go ahead and take our airline tubing and we'll go ahead and run it through our grommet. We'll go ahead and pull it up from the outside and underneath the hood, and we'll go ahead and pull our wires back in. We'll go ahead and take our wires and attach it to our airline tubing and pull it back through. And we'll fasten our gray cable to our white wire. And we'll pull assembly back through to the inside. We'll pull back what we need to go through our circuit breaker and then to our battery for the black wire, for our power supply, okay? And we'll go ahead and strip our wires back as well. Now also, we went a little more direct route this time because we're running short on cable. We'll cut back the sheath and wire as far as we need to go. Our white wire, we'll just go ahead and push this one aside for now. Let's go ahead and match up our wire to our original black wire. We'll go ahead and cut it in half again and add two small ring terminals. We'll connect up to our circuit breaker here, our accessory, in this case a brake controller, we'll go to a silver post, and from the battery we'll go to the copper post.
And the other end of our wire, we'll get the large ring terminal. All right, let's go ahead and take our white wire and we'll go ahead and cut it to length and go to our negative side of our battery. And we can go ahead and attach this one here. We'll go ahead and loosen up the nut. And then we're just gonna just uh, put a gap in the ring here. We'll go ahead and slide it back into place and then tighten up the nut. All right, now we go ahead and start working with wires for our brake controller. We'll use a wire harness that comes with the brake controller. And we'll add some loom material to it to help keep the wires contained. Part number for loom is 459075-1. Let's get our wires ready for our brake controller harness. We'll go ahead and cut this one flush because we won't need the bare end on the red wire. And then we'll use up the rest of our buck connectors from our ETBC7 kit and add to the end of the wires. Okay, set this guy down for now. Let's go ahead and cut our, let's get our other half of our wires ready to go. We'll even up the length of our wires and we'll go ahead and strip those guys back. First, we'll go work with our white wire. Now this is our single white wire that'll connect it to our blue wire from our brake controller. But this white wire ran out to the blue wire on our seven pole connector. Now our gray cable, we'll go ahead and cut the sheath off of it. We'll match up color for color for power for our brake controller. Now red wire will get connected up to the cold side of a brake switch, which means when you hit the brake pedal, the circuit comes on and that sends a signal to our brake controller. We'll go ahead and make a connection for our red wire. Okay, now in this case, our vehicle has an aftermarket wiring harness installed. And typically, we'll have the wires going, the signals going into the module, and then this will go out to the tow package for a trailer for the lights. This red wire here, the small red one, is actually our brake signal. So we can actually tap into that without ever tapping into the vehicle's wire harness. So we'll go ahead and use the quick splice connector that comes with the kit to tap into it. And we'll take our quick splice connector, put it over the wire we're gonna tap into, and then slide our new wire right next to it, and then squeeze down the metal clip in the middle, which will complete the circuit. Then we'll put our cap back together, and we can go ahead and set this to the side for now, and we'll go ahead and install a pocket for our brake controller. Let's go ahead and mount our pocket. Now it's generally a good idea to have it in a straight line with the vehicle and not have a twist in it like this. Up and down is perfectly fine. Now in this case, since our dash is pretty much curved and won't allow it to go in a straight line, we're gonna go over to the left hand side. We're gonna line up the seam here and bottom edge. We'll go ahead and use the sheet metal screws that come with the brake controller and we'll attach it to the dash. Go ahead and run our cable through the back side of the pocket, and we'll put our brake controller in place. There it is. We'll go ahead and snap it into the pocket. Then we'll take a few moments to go ahead and tidy your wires back up underneath the dash. Make sure you're safe and secure and not in the way of your feet. Now, we're just about down to the wire on this one, so let's go ahead and make our last connection to the battery. All 
All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our brake controller now. Now you can see we have power going to it because we have two dots. Now one dot's going to show power, and the other dot will be our indicator for your brake boost, which you can change it by using this button right here, B1, B2, B3, and then there's off. Okay, so when a B goes away, you can see you only have one dot that shows you just have power. Let's go ahead and put it back to where it was. And then we'll use the manual override. It says NC for no connection, which is correct. Let's go ahead and plug a trailer into the back of our seven pole connector and try it again. Our trailer hooked up, we got a C for a connection. We'll hit the manual override one more time. You can see how it scrolls through the numbers. So we know we have output going to the brake controller. We hit the foot brake, we should see a small amount of numbers come up as well. Now tell us we have signal from our brake switch. All right, looks like everything's working. Okay, with that, that'll finish it for our install with part number 90885, the Takancha Prodigy P2 brake controller, and also part number ETBC7 on our 2012 Toyota Highlander.